Let's continue with the capacitors and let's look at what happens when you have more than one capacitor set up. So we're, this is our first version of circuits, which we're going to be spending a little bit of time on uh, the next couple of weeks. Um, but capacitors they get used a lot of different ways. Many of the, many of the ways they get used is um, to safeguard systems, to uh, provide a specific voltage at different times, uh, to store energy in things like a taser. Um, there's there's a lot of uses for them and a lot of times you need more than one to accomplish that task and these are the two main ways of combining the capacitors all right so when you have uh, a capacitor it's usually drawn as a wire coming in two parallel lines notice they're not touching at that point and then a line going out so that that symbolizes the parallel plate capacitor it's gonna be easy to picture there um, but the, main, the first way we're going to look at adding capacitors is in parallel, where you have a wire going across and a wire going across that are parallel, and in between those two wires, you have capacitors set up, one to however many you feel like attaching, um, depending on how much free time you have. Um, so we're going to label those uh, capacitors C1, C2, C3, and so forth. That they, they could have the same capacitance, they could have different capacitances. It really depends on how you uh, decide to attach them. All right. But in parallel, when you have a, a series of multiple capacitors, as far as the battery cares, there's really only one capacitor. Uh, it sees all of that as just kind of one big capacitance that it's dealing with. And we're going to call that the equivalent capacitance, CEQ. It's kind of the total capacitance of the system. And when it's in parallel, what we have to do is, to find capacitance, we have to go back to the definition of capacitance, which is charge divided by voltage. So we have to find how much charge there is and find how much voltage there is. The nice thing about parallel is each one has the same voltage. They're all along that same, those same two rails that are set at a certain voltage that are attached to a 9-volt battery or plugged into the wall at 120 volts, whatever it's going to be. So each capacitor, because they're different capacitances with this same voltage, will have a different charge. We're going to call those charges Q1, Q2, all the way up to Qn just kind of give them names right now. We don't know what values they are because we don't know what the capacitance, we don't know what the voltage is, but we're just going to give them names for right now and see if anything uh, useful pops up. Um, so we have n capacitors to find the total amount of electric charge that we've built up on these capacitors. So we're going to call that the equivalent charge. That's just going to be all the charges added up because each one's going to have its own charge. Okay, so the equivalent capacitance is just the equivalent charge divided by the voltage. Remember, each one's going to have the same voltage, so we don't have to worry about an equivalent voltage. So the equivalent capacitance is all the charges added up divided by the voltage, but I can distribute that dividing by the voltage to each one. So it's the equivalent is charge 1 over voltage, charge 2 over voltage, all the way up to the last one. But if we just look at Q1 divided by delta V, charge divided by voltage on that first capacitor, that's just the first capacitance. Q2 over delta V is the second capacitance, all the way to the nth capacitance. So when you have the equivalent capacitance of a parallel set of uh, capacitors, all you have to do is add them up. So if you had 10 one farad capacitors in parallel, the equivalent capacitance would just be 10 farads. Right, you just add them all up. So it's the easier way to do things. And then you can do any uh, solving for the, the overall um, charge or voltage using that. All right, the other way of doing it is series. So series, here you, play, you replace it in series, each one gets the same electric charge. They're all in a row, okay, one right after the other. So that means, since they're all long lines, they kind of share 
wires. So if they share wires, you know, one develop one side develops plus Q that kind of leaves minus Q on the other side. The, the wire itself is going to remain neutral. So the two plates of the capacitor um, will have the same charge Q. That means if they're all going to have the same charge, they can't all have the same voltage. The total voltage has to be equal to whatever the battery is, but each voltage is going to be different. All right, so if we add up all the voltages, they're going to add up to whatever the battery supplies. Same, we're going to take the same thing, the total charge divided by the equivalent voltage, Q divided by adding up all the voltages. The problem is it's in the denominator, so we can't distribute things like we did with the parallel. So what I'm going to do to make it a little bit easier is take the reciprocal of everything. So 1 over the equivalent capacitance is voltage 1 over Q plus voltage 2 over Q plus blah, 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 blah. That means 1 over the equivalent capacitance is 1 over the first capacitance, 1 over the second, 1 over the third, 1 over the fourth, and so on. Um, but remember, 1 over the, 1 over, adding fractions, you don't just add the denominators. So what you have to do is either find, uh, either plug in your calculator with uh, everything to the minus 1 power or add with fractions if you really love fractions. But basically what you have to do is you find, add all the reciprocals of the capacitances and then take the reciprocal of that to find the equivalent capacitance. And we'll do a little bit of that in class. All right, move on to the third lecture.